It's not a strategy, but it's one hell of a strategic game. Ever since it was first introduced in 2002, Splinter Cell has always been the crown jewel of realistic stealth gaming. Even on normal difficulty, it's enough to get shot two or three times and you're dead. A gun blazing approach is doable, but very unrewarding. The game motivates you to be a ghost and stay undetected, but going from one gameplay style to another, you might ask yourself, which one is harder? I'll leave the answer to that question to you. As for me, in the next few minutes I'll give you my 6 hardest missions on the Xbox slash PC Splinter Cell series. Zachary! Yes sir! I just double checked the blueprints. Turns out there's a vent that comes out in the meeting room. ISDF makes me nervous. Make sure the vent is clear of any surveillance gear. The bathhouse mission of Chaos Theory is one hell of a challenge. Not only if you're trying to get a 100% stealth score, but simply if you're trying to finish the level in one life. Right from the beginning, the level doesn't give you much room to maneuver. Guards are everywhere. One mistake can be enough for you to restart the level or load from your last save point. The hardest part of the level is the last part in which you have to defuse a few bombs while avoiding getting killed by mercenaries with night vision goggles. In my opinion, it's the single hardest mission of Chaos Theory coming just a bit ahead of the South Korea level. It shows you how much Sam changed that he would even think about going after Third Echelon. He'd been a company man, loyal to the bone, but now... Here he was, ready to rip the guts out of the beast. By introducing Mark and Execute and a few other quick combat moves, Conviction made it much easier for the player to get out of a tricky situation. Probably the hardest level in the game was the iconic 3rd Echelon Headquarters level when Sam Fisher returned to the place that once employed him. Right at the beginning, getting detected once meant mission over. The level was packed with heavily armed guards and commandos who were constantly searching for you, not to mention the security systems that you had to bypass almost every step you would take. Personally, it was my least favorite mission of conviction not because it was bad, but simply because I kept getting detected or killed all the time. Right, but in two separate rooms. Possibly the most beautiful mission of Blacklist and, in my opinion, the hardest one of the installment. Truth be told, Blacklist was far from ever turning into the hardest Splinter Cell game. The game had a lot of combat options along with a whole arsenal of gadgets that could help you maneuver your way out of any trap. But still, the Denver mission was really hard, probably in the first half more than in the second. You're constantly exposed to guards, heavies, snipers, commandos, Drones, lasers, security cameras, you name it. The level gives you so many routes, at one point it almost seems like a maze. You just don't know where to go first. As the hardest level of Blacklist, it comes up at number 4 in the total countdown. This is one of those Splinter Cell moments that can bring tears to your eyes. The Sea of Oak Hosk level is simply that beautiful, especially during its intro, but it's also downright hard. First, it takes place in broad daylight. A huge chunk of the mission you have almost nowhere to hide, you can barely see anything during the snowstorm, not to mention that you can die in the first minute of the level if you don't open that parachute right. In one part, you have to kill or take down all the guards in the area, but you have nowhere to hide the bodies. And finally you have to take down a crazy skipper who would rather sink his ship than to let you take over it. It's all enough to make this the hardest mission of Double Agent and the third place on the final countdown. Are we sure it's 
saw. LAX is one of those missions that don't really allow any mistakes. Getting spotted just once meant mission over, and that's during almost the entire level. And this was during the time when Splinter Cell didn't really give you alternative routes and fancy combat moves that you could use to make the situation a bit easier on yourself. You had to take the specific route that the game set for you, and making a mistake wouldn't leave you with much options. Finally, at the end of the LAX mission, you had a time limit to stop a neurotoxin from releasing into the air, and you couldn't get spotted. Not only that, you had almost no space to take cover, and you literally had no time for the luxury of patience, which is usually a virtue in Splinter Cell. What the hell just happened? The broadcast... I replayed the original Splinter Cell a lot of times. And when I say a lot, I don't mean like 15 times, more like 1,015 times. But there's one level in particular that I played somewhat less than the others. Why? Because it made me want to smash my computer. The Abattoir mission. First the minefield, then the squeaky roof, then the godforsaken refrigerating rooms, and all those people trying to kill you. And then the final fight. I know, I know, the level is freaking beautiful. Beautiful, but deadly, and if you ask me any day of the week, the Abattoir mission of the original Splinter Cell stays the hardest mission of the series to this day. And there you have it. Now I just want to make it clear that this countdown is based on my opinion and gaming experience, and it's only normal to expect that a lot of you will disagree. So let me know down in the comments what Splinter Cell missions were the hardest for you and why. If you enjoyed the video, please give it thumbs up and share it with your friends. For more Splinter Cell content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will definitely make it up to you. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Stay strong.